Hello fans of Moshpit Passion, my name is Kayo, today, today here in Düsseldorf with Sabaton and we will talk about their new record The Great War which will be out next month in July. My first question is the topic about the first um, world war. On which stage of your songwriting writing, do you came up with this kind of idea to create a concept record? Uh, was actually among the ideas we have. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we have a lot of plans, but we don't know which way the music takes us in, mm. in beforehand. So I would say uh, it was one of the top two or three contenders that we had when we started uh, the songwriting process. So with that in mind and a few others after, I would say about 20, to 30 percent into the songwriting process that's when we focused in on the great war so um, usually when you find such kind of topic um, when it comes to research so what were your resources like museum books videos or do you talk with some historians about that uh, a bit of everything you said actually yeah. uh, in many cases it can start with a google and that'll point you in the right direction yeah. but uh, we've had uh, obviously wikipedia and the internet resources available especially the um, the youtube channel the great yeah. war yeah. amazing stuff which yeah and Indy and some of those guys were working with on the Sabaton History Channel. Yeah. But then, of course, there's book, there's doc books and documentaries about it. Uh, the problem is finding the right stories. Because, you know, I like to say that for every Sabaton song on an album, mm -hmm. there is two songs we had to leave behind musically. Mm -hmm. And there is ten stories mm -hmm. lyrically we couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, because for us it's very, very important that the lyrics and the music speak the same emotional language. Mm. Um, for this record, um, did you visit some kind of place or museum or do you find any specific topic where you say, hey, that is something I have to think about, it, that it's cool, it's about history that somehow um, inspires me to do that. It's a special, let me say, war or sp specific um, happening. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it certainly a lot of them, but it wasn't just in front of this because I mean, we this has been in the back of our minds doing, yeah. you know, albums about military conflicts for a long time. So we have visited World War One battlefields that mm. I'm pretty sure has affected us, yeah. but not specifically when we decided to go World War One and then we go uh, to the battlefields, because yeah. for us it's it's really tricky. We've done, back in the days, we did a lot of research. I mean, for example, long story short, I um, w wanted to write a song about Stalingrad. Yeah. So I read all the books I could find mm -hmm. and uh, had all the information in my head. But the song and the recording didn't happen until, let's say, half a year later. Mm -hmm. So when I came to actually writing the lyrics and the song was, was done, mm -hmm. I didn't know where to go because yeah. there was so much information and at the same time I wasn't passionate about it because yeah. it was old news, you know? Yeah. If you get me, it's like when you discover something, that's when you fall in love with yeah. the idea and that's when you're passionate. So I found then a translation of a Russian soldier's diary mm -hmm. and I used that as the basis. Of yeah. course, I couldn't have done that without having read those books. Yeah. So we are, we are. When we're deciding on things, we're. It's not last minute by any means, but it's too late by the time we're doing it to do a huge road trip and uh, visit the site yeah. and do everything. Because if we did that, we would have to add one extra year. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, if we wanted to do one song, we need to yeah. visit ten places. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it will take us one more year, you know, between the albums, yeah. um, and that wouldn't be possible. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a concept record, and so where does it start? Um, is it the music to start, or is there something you show behind f f f before? Um, for instance, there's a, a movie called The White Ribbon. I don't know if you know it. It's about the time before the first world war how germany was back in the day and explained the emotion the depression the anger frustration and how um, people yeah got some attitude bad attitudes which leads them in wrong ways for instance and um, i haven't seen it but i want to see it now yeah, <laughs> definitely it's a good good uh, white ribbon you say it's you know the white ribbon okay, it's a german it movie um it's about a small village, like I said, it's dep about depression, how get kids 
beaten up and the kids are like the generation in the first uh, world where we became like that to understand those people um, it's show it shows them you know I'm gonna pick up my phone now yes yeah. not to be doing social media or anything yeah. stupid I want to write this down so my uh, question was so where does your record start uh, it's Actually, you know, you mean musically, where you do musically or yeah. Uh, lyrically? Yeah, lyrically, the theme. Uh, the theme, oh, we, we, we try to do it chronologically, but we don't, mm -hmm. because it would be such a bad listener's experience, you know, mm -hmm. because I think, you know, you can totally destroy an album and the listener's experience of an album by putting the songs in the wrong order. Yeah. And even though we tried a lot to get, okay, but if we change around like this, we mm. change the topic of that song to this mm. song instead, and we switch it around uh, just to force it do to be chronological. Mm. First of all, we thought we're forcing topics onto songs mm. that doesn't matter. And also, yep. if we're talking about people like Lawrence of Arabia or the Red Baron, where are they? in the chron chronological timeline because they were there for years. Yeah. Also Francis Pegamogabo, should we start with them when they entered the war or should we start with them when they did mm -hmm. that pivotal moment in their career and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of, and also where do we put uh, Verdun? Yeah. Field, the song Fields of Verdun is about 303 days of battle or mm -hmm. combat. So there were so many questions. We, we decided, we no we can't. Mm -hmm. Because in every way we would make the album worse, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and <laughs> so we decided let's let's not do a t total concept, but um, a theme of the yeah. album. So this is a collection of stories from yeah. World War One. Yeah. Um, I saw something very interesting for your fans. You will release a limited uh, deluxe box, box, which is made out of wood, and there are specific CDs on there, like um, have to sh um, like a. CD including a history spoken word mm -hmm. and a CD with the title The Soundtrack of the Great War. Can you yeah, explain yes. us with those CDs? What uh, you listened to an iPad before you came here, yeah. right? Yes, right. So you have heard the history edition. Nice. That's cool. That's the one with the narrative. And th but that means then that you haven't heard everything that's on the regular edition. Because you, from, for example, the song. The Red Baron, you went mm -hmm. directly from spoken word into boom, here comes the song. Yeah. While that song has a long intro. So yeah. in many cases it's different there. Oh. And uh, the soundtrack, mm -hmm. well, it is basically an orchestral, think of it like movie trailer huh? music uh, yeah. thing. Where yeah. It is our songs. Yeah. Uh, but we don't do the guitar way. Yeah. We do it the classical or hybrid cinematic music way. Nice. Um, it's very interesting and cool for me because which brings you on another level, like 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 a musical. You have the music, you have the story, and also um, for your upcoming tour. I don't know when it will release. Do we have maybe an idea how your production will look like on the stage? I know fire lighters. <laughs> yes. Are, but is there something new you will bring to the table? A lot of it. Uh, people can actually, uh, if people are uh, looking at the social medias, there is already some hints. We, yeah. we didn't unveil everything yet, but a few weeks ago we played in Pilsen, mm -hmm. in Czech Republic, yep. and uh, you could see already then a bit of the new theme. Of course, it's mm. heavily inspired by World War One, yeah. and we've uh, taken away almost everything. We have the tank still, yeah. you know, modified though, and it's a totally new stage set, totally new pyro uh, setup. Mm. So, uh, and also for some band members, new stage clothes, mm. and uh, we we just thought let's uh, let's try and look forward, yeah. even though we're looking backward in history, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yes, um, I want to come to the fan questions because I set up yesterday a request if you got something you want to ask um, Zabaton and there were a lot of uh, requests and I put um, some into this uh, interview because it's getting so complex and there's something cool. in interesting we want to know about your opinion um, because it's about the Bismarck topic you released the video and uh, the lyrics, I have to say, the video, it's like a small uh, Game of Thrones into a music clip because the animation <laughs> is very, very good. It is, yes. And um, it's <laughs> also you. what you did, etc. But there was one question like, hey, you will release a t-shirt about it, about that boat, about the Bismarck, and on the back there's uh, the part of the lyrics, um, King of the Ocean. 
and the person said, aren't you afraid that maybe right-wing people or maybe Nazis could introduce or misuse that because it is a Nazi vote? Uh, well, in a sense, yes. Mm. But let's be honest, we have been singing about controversial topics yep. for so many years that I, I think there are <laughs> we have more open targets than yeah. that. So I'm not worried at all. Yeah. Because we found out we are going to be misunderstood no matter what yeah. we do. Anything that ends with ist yeah. is something we've been accused of being at some point. So, yeah, I'm not worried at all. Mm. Because people we know by now, most people at least, mm. that we're a politically and religiously neutral band. We Definitely. don't do any propaganda in yep. along those lines. So, and as long as we mm. are singing about controversial subjects or topics which is we're gonna be in mm. military conflict, yep. at that point we are open for all kinds of use and abuse. Yep. And uh, so if we were to close, if we were to worry about that mm. and try and stop, uh, you know, all of those possible things, mm. we would probably be the most boring heavy metal band in the world. Yeah, I know <laughs> what you mean. Definitely, I have to say, um, what I really like is if you're singing about wars. For instance, I'm a German. If you're singing about the um, Nazi topics, let me say, for me it's like to see, oh my God, this is so disgusting that that point that what they did those people you know you're a historian you are putting yep. like um, a head on like you're reflecting that view you know what i mean and for me it's like a german said oh, that was very nasty i don't want to want to be this over again so it's like a teaching lesson that you're reflecting hey that is from the past but it's real and it really happened you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think i think it's a good thing yeah. and I, I don't think anything at all benefits from being forgotten or not talked about definitely and i mean for us when we sing about these things we're not passing judgment mm. and we who the fuck are we to pa pass judgment yeah. because it's easy to judge people no matter which conflict or which side they were fighting for it's very easy to judge them by today's uh l well a modern lens mm. if you will yeah with the facts, uh, you know, we have now, mm. with an open media that's easily accessible. Definitely. Trust me, you know, in many cases in in history, or I to this day, people are judging soldiers from twenty, a hundred, or five hundred years ago. But all they, but people forget that. In many cases, if you go far back in history, these soldiers couldn't even read or write. Definitely. They, the, what they knew, what was the truth, was what the maybe the state or yeah. the church told them. And if they told them Killed that them. the other side, they are animals, and do not b make sure you're not taking prisoners yeah. because they will, they will torture you to death. Yeah. Then that's the reality, and I think most people would react. Uh, well, I say, from fr at that point, how could you in any way act differently yeah. when that was all the information Definitely. you had? So, uh, I think it's very, I mean, we don't do, as I said, politics or yeah. religion, but it's something, a message we want to drive across. Yeah. Don't judge what people did a hundred years ago. Yeah. Uh, sitting here comfortably with YouTube movies and documentaries and judge them by uh, modern standards and facts. Definitely, it's a, it's a cool statement, cool statement point. And which leads me to my next qu question, which is um, when it comes to art itself, because in Germany it's discussed since three or two years, um, what is allowed in art? Um, is there a specific border or can you cross that border? Is for you some kind of theme or topic where you say, hey, okay, that that is a red line. We don't want to cross that. Or is it something we say? Hey, we are artists. We want to say. We want to give that topic <laughs> some kind of space because it's imp important. Like the like the people that they see that really happen. It shouldn't be forget about it. We are pushing those boundaries every day. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like we want to be controversial, but not to be controversial to draw attention to ourselves, yeah. but to draw attention to the subject. If you mm. know what I mean. Definitely. And uh, I think it's a good thing uh, with uh, free speech and uh, such things uh, because we are we're using it pretty heavily, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's um, I, I would say 
for us there are no limits what we couldn't uh, and couldn't do mm. it's all about how we do it because mm. In, as a matter of fact, all we're dealing with is history, yeah. and it has happened. Um, the history should not be forgotten or hidden away yeah. for any reason at all. Yeah. May it be, you know, you don't like your country's history. Yeah. Every country has something in their history to be proud of and to be ashamed of. Definitely. At least if you've been existing for more than five years as a nation. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you haven't had the time yet, you know. But uh, it's really the way we tell it. The only way we wouldn't do it... Mm is if we feel like this is us purposely mm. rubbing salt in an open wound. Mm. I know what that you would not be a cool way. And yeah, in, in the matter of free speech, we could do it, yeah. but we wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, to be controversial, and maybe people don't like that we do that, yeah. that's fine, you know. Yeah. And in many cases, very many people seem to be very butthurt these days and very <laughs> easily offended. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that, mm. you know, because at the same time as it's their right to be offended, yeah. my right to say what the fuck I want yeah. supersedes the right <laughs> of, uh, you know, shutting me down for yeah. saying that thing. So uh, in that case, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. Uh, it should be free, but I, I couldn't see us using freedom of speech yeah. or the arts to purposely, purposefully make people feel bad, mm. you know or be sad, yeah. that would be wrong. Um, also, another great, great point to um, explain that, I think, especially when it comes to social media, because I saw also some bad comments about like, oh no, what's the Bismarck topic? Uh, you're writing about uh, Nazi ship, uh, you know? And it's like, yeah, okay, it's your opinion, but don't push it. It's also something different. If you don't like things, then it's okay, but don't push it, you know? Don't push every time your opinion on someone. On someone. You know? uh, well, I totally agree. I mean, especially these days when it seems like every actor, artist, mm -hmm. and uh, is telling people what to vote, what to eat, yes. what to jip, 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 jip. And I mean, I would be proud to be one of the few bands who didn't ta tell people what to vote, eat, think, or, you know. Yeah. We'd like to be the one asking the questions. Yeah. That makes sense for us. That's cool, man. And maybe um, a perfect, um, how do you say, uh, platform or space for it is maybe your new new YouTube channel, the Zabaton History Channel. I want to talk about. That's very cool, very unique, especially from a burn perspective. I don't know if any band did that before. Maybe you want to talk about what's coming up in the next month on the on the YouTube channel. Oh, I I remember. I have done some stuff and recorded some stuff, and so has Pat. But now well, you put me on the spot. I <laughs> I don't know in which order the release. So I don't wanna mm. I don't wanna promise any of you guys anything. Mm. And then it didn't turn up because mm. we we're saving that for later. Because I honestly don't know the release schedule. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> but um, for sure, as we are getting closer and closer to the new album, mm. and we are releasing singles from it, there yeah. will be you know episodes connected yeah. to to those things. And also, I mean, obviously, we don't know yet uh, if we can keep this going yeah. forever, but we want to. Yeah. Uh, we've uh, put down quite a bit of money into the project, but at some point we have to see if there's interest for it. Yeah. Can it sustain itself through, well, Patreon and also regular YouTube, I guess, ads, yeah. which isn't much per view anyway, but the dream is to be able to keep this alive and in the future have at least one movie about every Sabaton song. Yeah. And that's getting to a lot now, actually, isn't it, yeah. you know? That's cool, man. <laughs> I would love to do it because, yeah. you know, if somebody likes Sabaton but don't care about history, yeah. that's totally fine. I don't yeah. I don't judge people because, you know, it's totally cool to s drink yeah. a beer and sing along to heavy metal. However, those uh, people or those of you who are of that, I'm thinking maybe 30 to 50 percent of them can be missing uh, an extra dimension to our music yeah and it's maybe because we are we, we're not historians by any means we're amateurs but we're nerds yeah. <laughs> and many references we do in our lyrics yeah. you know that we sing about aren't really um, apparent mm -hmm. if you're not haven't at least you know read a book Definitely. and you know gone through it yeah so 
uh, we found out ourselves, but also a lot of fans like, oh, okay, that line in the lyrics makes so so much sense now. Okay, yeah. and there's an extra dimension to it that I think a lot of people might be missing. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't, that's fine too. It's an interesting point what you said uh, when it comes to every song should be an own video because I know many bands who really plan for that. For instance, they adapt uh, a book and they wrote about a concept about that book and um, they said yeah yeah we will release uh, video etc and it was well planned sounds really good but never did that i think for sabaton if you did will do this it will definitely cool oh. man well, i i hope it can i mean yeah. uh, the difference here is we're not making any promises i yeah. guess <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a dream we have but you know we can't push what we like onto other people it goes yeah. in the same way if it's appreciated and it can sustain itself mm -hmm then we are happy mm -hmm. to put in the effort, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's the most fun of all the things that isn't related to writing or yeah. performing music. Then that's the most fun I had to anything Sabaton related. Yeah. Nice, man. So, yeah, we are already done with the interview. There's one question left because our magazine is called Moshpit Passion and always our interviews say maybe an interesting Moshpit experience, an own experience. Maybe you have a nice story to tell or funny or you maybe do you remember your first mosh pit well i do but i think the best mosh pit memory i have is actually reactions from people who are have been guests at our concerts yeah. older generation people who are there because maybe they were veterans of the battles yeah. or something we met it could have been somebody's family it could have been people who were working in the music industry but not really into metal yeah and I guess this goes for most metal bands, not only Sabaton fans. Mm. But to see such a violent uh, expression, but at the same time, somebody falls down. Mm. That's all. Whoop, stop, stop. Somebody will be there to pick you up, you know. Yeah. Unless it's a, you know, there are always the situations when it, it gets out of hand okay. and drunken people. But it's, it's so few times I've seen that. Mm. And I, I really like that because it's like a really violent expression of emotion, but at the same time, somebody who's, you know, smaller falls down. I've seen people take a few hits mm. themselves, you know, or, you know, getting punched in, involuntarily, yeah. I mean, not violently, um, to try and protect that person. I've seen people lose their glasses, yeah. you know, and, and basically other people are jumping down to try and protect them yeah. and stuff like that and that's I think the whole that's the coolest thing about the whole yeah. mosh pit thing going on actually and that's the comments we get because for us it's not going to be really news yeah. you know but it's when we get those reactions after the shows from those other people I yeah. talked about then they comment on it, it's like yeah it's a pretty fucking cool thing isn't it you know <laughs> Definitely nice, man. So yeah, we are already done with the interview. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks for having um, me. I got a small present. That's our magazine printed in a newspapers format. Oh, oh yeah, I saw that. And um, by the end of June, they will out our next issue. For our viewers, I want to say thank you for watching. Check out the new Sabaton record. I listened to, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. It's not really amazing. Follow uh, Sabaton on Facebook, social media, website. Support them bei der Record. See you next time, guys. Take care. Bye. Freunde, ich hoffe, euch hat das Interview gefallen. Damit ihr keine Videos verpasst, abonniert unseren Channel. Auf unserem Kanal findet ihr noch weitere interessante Interviews mit namhaften Bands. Schaut euch auch auf unserer Facebook-Seite herum, wo wir exklusiven Content wie interessante Beiträge, Konzertfotos oder Videos uploaden. Auf unserer Webseite www.moshpitpassion.de findet ihr CD-Reviews, Konzertfotos, Konzertberichte, Interviews und viele, vieles mehr.